Hi everyone, my name is Tim Perry. I'm one of the National Training Specialists here at Reckon, and today I'm going to walk you through an overview of the settings within Reckon Cloud Pause. The majority of the settings within Reckon Cloud Pause can be found within the management system. So to get there, we select the radio button and then we press open. You'll notice that it opens up a new tab in your web browser and the screen that it defaults to is your inventory settings. So what I'm going to do is work from left to right and go over each of the settings. Under reports, you'll find that you've got sales reports, Z report archive, as well as gift cards. Within the reports center, we can click on today and we can filter for other days. So we can look at sales reports for today, yesterday, the last seven days or month to date. You can also filter by cash register and you can also filter by categories, items, suppliers, and so on. The figures that you see below are your sales overview for the current day. You can download your unit sold as a report straight to Excel. You can also see a bank of your receipts that have been created today so far. By clicking into the Z report archive, we have the ability to go over all the Z reports that have been created using Rec and Cloud Pause. So you can view them easily by selecting the view button or you can export them to Excel by pressing the Excel button. The next setting that we'll look at is for gift cards. By clicking into gift cards, it's going to bring us up a table that shows us the total sum of outstanding gift cards as well as the number of outstanding gift cards, which is the total number of gift cards that we've given out. You can filter by outstanding, ones that were created today, yesterday, last seven days, month to date, and so on. The next setting moving across is inventory. Our first option within inventory is to create a new item. If we select create a new item, all we need to do if we want to create a new item is follow the prompts. We put the name of the item we want to create, a barcode, supplier name, stock quantity. We can choose a color or we can choose an image for the item. You can categorize it and if the category you're looking for has not yet been created, you can create a new category on the fly. You can put in a supplier price, you can choose a markup by percentage or you can just create a new price and the markup will automatically be generated. Under tax you can also put in the applicable tax rate for any items that you're selling. In store preferences, you can choose if items out of stock are available for pre-order or if they're not displayed at all. Showing cash register will let you know whether the item that you've created will show up on your cash register or not. Once you're done creating your item, you can press save and you can also duplicate your item so that if you need to make a similar item but with small amendments, you can do it quickly. The next section along is new category. Creating a new category allows you to create an umbrella term that you can put your items in. For example, you might create a category like confectionery to keep all of the different lollies and candy that your shop sells. Again, you can choose a code or color for text as well as a main image for the category. The import functionality allows you to download a CSV template and input large quantities of different items quickly into the Excel spreadsheet which can be imported into the software. This is a great option if you've got a large inventory list that you want to import in one go rather than manually entering items one at a time. You can export your items that you currently have in a similar fashion using the export button. Below we have a list of all of the different items that we have available at the present moment. You can filter by all ones that are being shown in the cash register ones that are inactive, ones that are uncategorized, etc. By pressing the little graph icon, you can also see the total cost of your inventory as well as the total inventory value. And you'll notice that the system's quickly giving you what your profit margin is going to be. Moving along, we have our employee section. In the employees section, all of the users that have access to our cash register are listed and they also have the capacity to measure 
the time that they've spent working within the shop by pressing the plus button here and putting their clock in and clock out times. You can also easily export your sales reports. The next setting along is customers. Under customers you'll find three subheadings. You've got your customer list, loyalty programs as well as gift cards. The customer list works similar to the items list in the sense that you can create a new group of customers, a new customer, you can import them in bulk as well as export them in bulk. Creating a new group will give you the opportunity to categorize customers as you see fit. For example, you might create a group of referrals from a specific source so that you can report on them independently. To create a new group, you simply press create a new group, type in the group name and press save. When you create a new customer, you can then assign a group to that particular customer by clicking the checkbox here. The rest of the information for creating a new customer is fairly straightforward. First name, last name, you can apply them to a loyalty program which we'll talk about in just a minute and you can also apply their date of birth, mobile number and email information. If you want you can also add another custom field so that you can keep more information on your customers. Moving along to loyalty programs, what you'll notice here is that we've previously created two loyalty discounts, staff member as well as VIP. So if someone's a staff member, we can assign them to this loyalty discount and they'll receive 40% off any purchases that they make in store. Similarly, if someone's assigned the VIP discount, they'll receive a 10% discount. Other loyalty programs that you can access using Record Cloud Pause include the punch card and the birthday. Let's look at birthday. To turn birthday on, you need to first click the toggle switch just here. Then you can choose when your birthday loyalty program is valid for. You can choose the day of someone's birthday, the week of their birthday, or the month of their birthday. You can then choose the reward. Free text allows you to create any reward you want. For example, if we select free text and then type pizza, it means that the reward on their birthday will be a free pizza. Alternatively, you can select discount. Someone could have a 20% discount on their birthday or they could have a specific item. Now, when you choose specific item, you can only search items that you've currently created in your inventory list. So we have candy bar, which is why I can select it here. The next loyalty program is punch card. Similarly, as we did with birthday, we hit the toggle switch to activate punch cards. Number of purchases means how many purchases does someone have to make in order to receive their award. So 5 purchases or 5 punches or 10 purchases or 10 punches are the two options that you have available. Punch requirement means what has to happen. Manual punch means that I can create a punch at any point. Purchase minimum means that for example if someone spends $10 they'll get a punch. Specific item means that if they buy a certain item they can there are can, they can have a punch. Specific category means that if they purchase an item from a specific category, they'll receive a punch. Show and receipt means that the number of punches that they currently have will be tracked on the receipt. Purchase terms are the terms that have to be met in order to receive a punch on their card. Reward type, similar to before, free text allows you to pick anything you like. You can also choose discount, or specific item. Redeem terms are the terms that have to be met in order to be able to redeem the reward from giving in the punch card. Moving across we now have gift cards. With Reckon Cloud Pause the settings for gift cards are as follows. You can choose for how long you want the gift card to be valid for, whether it's always a year, six months, one month, three weeks or two weeks. Enabling custom values means that if you have a value that you want to apply to a gift card that is outside of your presets, you can do it. For example, if you have presets of a $100 gift card, a $50 gift card, and a $20 gift card, if someone comes into the shop and asks for a $60 gift card, by having enable custom values switched on, you can make the $60 gift card. Custom tax allows you to manipulate the tax that's applied to gift cards as it suits your store. By having store credit switched on, it means that if someone makes a purchase for $50 and they have a $60 gift card, 
then the balance of $10 will be returned to their gift card. The next set of settings after customers is preferences. Under preferences, you'll notice that we have receipt, in-store, payment providers, cash registers, and accounting software. Receipt is going to be the information that is populated each time you print a receipt. Your tax VAT merchant number is the field where you put your ABN. Your receipt footer message might be something like, thank you for shopping with us. Next receipt number is important in case you've already created previous receipts and you want to start at the correct number. You can put a logo on your receipts as well as other information such as phone numbers, email addresses and websites. The next piece of settings is in-store. In-store allows you to change your default tax rate, whether your prices are displayed as including or excluding tax, the currency that your store is working in, as well as activate price rounding. If we turn that on, we can, for example, turn it to $0.05 cents price rounding. Receipt and order preferences allows you to add same items to order as a single line or multiple lines. For example, if someone buys five bottles of milk and you've got single line chosen, then it will say five buy bottles of milk. Whereas if you have multiple lines, each bottle of milk will be printed on the receipt as a separate line. This is important, for example, if you were running like a buy one, get one free offer and you wanted to show that some of the items on the receipt had a zero price or were given a specific discount. Receipt should be labeled as tax invoice or receipt. Enable signature on screen allows people to sign. Allow to disable tax in register allows you to switch tax on and off just in case you're selling services or some sort of item that doesn't have tax associated with it. Enable order printing is great for cafes and restaurants that want to print a second copy of the receipt that has the order so that they can send it off to the kitchen. Tip line on order print places a line on the receipt that is where customers can put the amount of tip that they want to present to the shop. General preferences. We have auto lock screen, which will lock down the screen after 5, 10, 15 minutes and so on. And gift receipt valid for will determine how long any gift receipts that you send or print will be valid for, whether it's two weeks, three weeks, a month, so on and so forth. Under printing preferences, you'll find printer settings. Now you can choose to print to a receipt printer or an A4 slash letter printer. If you have a receipt printer, then select this option so that your receipts will be printed at the correct size and format. You can also determine whether or not when checking out with no receipt, whether your cash drawer opens. Moving to payment providers, Reckon Cloud POS currently integrates with PayPal. To set that up, you simply need your username, password and signature, which you can get from your PayPal account. We also work with all external terminals. You simply just need to name your terminal and activate it. Once you've activated it, you can use your terminal to capture payments and you can use Reckon Cloud POS in order to create receipts. Moving on to cash registers. At this point in the settings, you can add additional cash registers as well as edit them. Accounting software settings allows us to connect to the different providers that Reckon Cloud POS works with. For example, you've got Reckon 1 and Reckon accounts hosted. To activate this you simply press the toggle, select the book that you want to attach the Reckon Cloud POS software to, you pick your sales account, a tax code for transactions with tax, a tax code for transactions without tax and then Reckon Cloud POS will automatically create a bank account within your Reckon 1 software. Reckon accounts hosted integration is similar except you'll log in using your user ID and password. If you are using Reckon Accounts Hosted, it's important to note that Reckon Accounts Hosted rather than Cloud Pods will be the source of truth for the software. What this means is that you'll create items, customers, etc. in Reckon Accounts Hosted and they'll filter through to the cash register. So thank you for watching our overview of the settings within Reckon Cloud Pods. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at training at Reckon.com. And please be sure to watch our other quick how-to videos to learn how to navigate and best use the software. Thanks.